And question number three, we're looking at a power series solution to uh, y double prime plus one minus x squared times y equals zero. So with a power series, we want uh, the solution to be in the form y equals the sum uh, as n goes from zero to infinity c n x to the n. Uh, we're going to substitute that in and, uh, and then solve for the coefficients. Uh, to substitute this, we're going to need the second derivative. So my first derivative is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, c sub n times n times x to the m minus 1. Uh, just a note here, you could leave that lower limit at 0 if you want. And notice at 0, n is going to be 0. So your first term is just going to be 0. And then the second derivative, carry down the exponent and then decrease the exponent by 1. You're going to get n times m minus 1 times x to the m minus 2. Uh, and I put the lower limit starting at 2 because notice that at, at, uh, at 0, this is already 0. And the derivative of 0 is 0. And at 1, m minus 1 is 0. So those first two terms will drop out here. Uh, so I'm going to substitute in y double prime and y. Uh, so y double prime is here. And then uh, plus 1 minus x squared times y equals 0. Uh, the first thing I need to do is, is uh, bring any x's that are outside of the summation uh, to uh, inside the summation. Uh, so here on my second term, I'll do that by distributing. I'll have 1 times the sum and then minus x squared times that sum. There's 1 times the sum and then I have x squared times the sum and then I can bring that x squared in. When I bring that x squared in, uh, x to the n times x squared is going to uh, increase that exponent to x to the m plus 2. Okay, so now in order to combine my summations, I need two things to happen. I need these exponents, the powers of x to be equal, and I need the lower indices to be equal. You want to start with the exponents. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change the index from n to k, where k is equal to whatever that exponent is. You're going to do that for each summation. So it could have different values for each summation. So on the first summation, uh, notice k is equal to m minus 2. That tells me that my n is k plus 2. On my second summation, k is equal to n. And on my third summation, k is equal to m plus 2. So n is k minus 2. Uh, so I'm going to change all of my n's to k's. On this first term, uh, when n is 2, k is 2 take away 2, or 0. So my lower limit is 0. Uh, n is k plus 2, so I get c sub k plus 2, and then times k plus 2, times k plus 2 minus 1, gives you k plus 1, times x to the k. On the second term, just let k equal to n. So uh, you just change the variable. k equals 0 to infinity, c sub k, x to the k. And then minus, on this last summation, k is equal to m plus 2. When n is 0, 0 plus 2 is 2. So you start when k is 2, to infinity. Uh, here n is k minus 2 c sub k minus 2 x to the k equals 0. So now we have all the same powers of k. Now we need to work with the lower index. And for the lower indices to match, you want to expand terms. You want to expand to whatever that, that uh, highest number is. So I'm comparing k equals 0, k equals 0, and k equals 2. I want to expand so each one of these lower limits is at k equals 2. 
So we're going to expand this first summation and the second summation. We're going to bring out uh, terms the zero term in the first term, bring out the zero term in the first term. Okay, in the first summation, when I bring out the zero term, I get C sub 2 times 2 times 1 times x to the 0. And when I bring out the first term, I get C sub 3 times 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 1 is 2, x to the first. And then uh, my summation here is exactly the same, but my lower limit now is at 2. So I brought out the 0 and the first term. On my second summation, bringing out the 0 term, I get C sub 0, x to the 0. It's this term. And then bringing out uh, when k equals 1, I get c sub 1, x to the first, c sub 1, x to the first. And then I'm left with k goes from 2 to infinity, c sub k, x to the k. And I just carried along the last term. Uh, so here I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to combine my x to the 0 terms and my x to the first terms and simplify a little bit. This is just a repeat of what I had. So when I combine my terms, notice this is 2c2. I simplified first, I'm sorry. Plus 6c3x plus c0 plus c1x. Everything else is the same. And then combining my terms, 2c2 plus c0. It's combined here. Uh, 6c3x and c1x are combined here. And then this gives you your x squared, x to the third, x to the fourth, and so forth terms. So I've combined all of the summations. I've factored out the power of x, x to the k. And that leaves me with c sub k plus 2 times k plus 2 times k plus 1 plus c sub k minus c sub k minus 2. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see what values our coefficients can be. Uh, we, know that we know that the sum here is equal to 0. And for a polynomial to be equal to 0, all of the coefficients have to be 0. So my constants have to equal 0. 2c2 plus c0 is 0. My x terms have to equal 0. 6c3x plus c1x has to be 0. And then this coefficient has to be 0. c sub k plus 2 times k plus 1 plus c sub k minus ck minus 2 is equal to 0 for k equals 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Uh, so this first equation here gives me a relationship between c2 and c0. If you solve for c2, you get c2 is negative 1 half c0. The second relationship gives you a relationship between c1 and c3. Solve for c3. And you get C3 is equal to negative 1, 6, C1. And then this last relationship gives you uh, a relationship between C sub k plus 2, C sub k, and C sub k minus 2 for k equals 2 and higher. And if you solve for C sub k plus 2, uh, by bringing over to the right side the C sub k, that'll make it negative. And the c sub k minus 2, that'll make that term positive. And then dividing by the coefficient of c sub k plus 2, uh, it gives you a, a formula. It's called a recurrence relation for calculating each one of the coefficients for x squared, x to the third, x to the fourth, and so forth. Uh, so let's see what those coefficients look like, uh, numeric-wise. So let's start when k is 2. 
substitute into this recurrence relation, and when k is 2, you get a subscript of 2 plus 2, or 4, equals, and then k is 2, 2 take away 2 is 0, so you get c0 minus c2 over, in the denominator, you get 2 plus 2 is 4, and 2 plus 1 is 3. You get c0 minus c2 over 4 times 3. So notice up here, uh, we can use this relationship between c2 and c0. c2 is negative 1 half c0, so I'm replacing that. And, uh, and when you subtract a negative, that's the same as adding. So I have 1 plus 1 half c0, which is the same as 3 halves c0 over uh, 3 times 4. Uh, here the 3's can cancel and the 2 comes down to give you 1 eighth c0. So my fourth coefficient is just 1 eighth of the, the uh, 0 coefficient. So let's calculate a couple of these. Uh, when k is 3, it's going to give you the coefficient for, for your uh, fifth degree term. And substituting in, you get c1 minus c3 over 5 times 4. And again, uh, I'm going to use the relationship that uh, c3 is negative 1, 6, c1. And uh, 1 plus 1, 6 is 6, 6 plus 1, 6 is 7, 6, c1. Uh, here the 7 doesn't cancel with anything, and when I bring the 6 down, I get 6 times 20 is 120. So I get c sub 5 is 7 over 120 times c sub 1. So do uh, at least one more. k equals 4 gives you c sub 6 equals c2 minus c4 over 6 times 5. Uh, c2 is negative 1 half c0. c4 is 1 eighth c0. So I get negative 1 half c0 minus 1 eighth c0. Uh, I can write 1 half as 4 eighths. So negative 4 plus negative 1 gives me negative 5 eighths c0. Here the 5's will cancel. And I can bring the 8 down. 6 times 8 is 48. You get negative 1 over 48 c0. Uh, so again, our solution to the power series is essentially a polynomial, where each one of these c's gives you the coefficient of the uh, term that matches the power. So c sub 0 has a power that would be your x to the 0 power, c sub 1, x to the first, c sub 2, x squared, and so forth. This is the form that we want the answer in. And then just substituting in the values that I've gotten uh, up to C6. I have C2 is negative 1 half C0. C3 is negative 1 6 C1. C4 is 1 eighth C0. C5 is 7 over 120 C1. C6 is negative 1 over 48 C0 and so forth. And notice that you can group these uh, by the uh, C's to form two linearly independent solutions. So when I group these, factoring out the C0 and combining all the C0 terms, I get 1 minus 1 half x squared plus 1 eighth x to the fourth minus 1 over 48 x to the sixth, and that continues. And then when I combine all the C1 terms and factor out the C1, I get x minus 1 sixth x to the third plus 7 over 120 x to the fifth and so forth. So this is what the answer would look like.